The Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. Joining me today as panelists are Davi Barker of Bitcoin Not Bombs. How's it going? Derek J. Freeman of DerekJ.me. Hey. And Mr. Chris Ellis. Hello. Awesome. Just stop this. All right. Thanks for joining me, everyone. And uh, issue one, Bitcoin Foundation Trials Block Vi Bitcoin Foundation trials blockchain voting in latest election controversy. This is interesting. The Bitcoin Foundation rolled out their new blockchain voting system for the election to replace two board members. After an outcry from candidates and users, the foundation nixed the voting system, which invalidated the votes already cast and restarted the voting process. The process was described as difficult to use, and crowdfunding startup Swarm came in to help with an improved voting system. This was not enough, and even more people expressed their objections to the process, citing concerns that even more votes would be left out in an election where few foundation members are even voting and candidates need over 50% of the vote to secure a seat. No one has met the threshold yet. Did you vote in this election? Should the foundation be setting the example for blockchain-based voting or should they stick to more traditional methods of voting for electing board members? Have you seen, have you been keeping up with the election controversy at all? Davi Barker. So uh, I did not vote in this controversy because I'm not a member of the foundation. Um, this is also the first I'm hearing of it because I don't actually follow the foundation or particularly care much about what they are up to. Um, should they be setting an example? Yes. Everyone should be setting an example. I think everyone alive, everyone within the sound of my voice should be attempting to set an example of uh, you know what they think good standard, standard practices should be. Um, as far as should they use one system or another, I don't care. It's a private organization. They can run their elections however they want. But generally speaking, voters like it if your system is decided upon and settled before you begin collecting votes. That's generally how a successful election occurs. Derek? Yeah, I did not vote. I don't follow the Bitcoin Foundation. I wish they operated more as an oligarchy and just uh, did whatever they wanted and didn't ask permission from people because I'm not really sure what uh, the people who vote get out of the Bitcoin Foundation. Uh, everyone has the power to represent themselves uh, with the, you know, the internet. People can make a video. People can tweet. Uh, they can do whatever they want. Uh, if they're not a part of this elite group, um, and they want a voice, they should be doing something other than voting. Chris? Well, no, I didn't vote because I'm... Um, oh, actually, you know what? I actually might be a member. I think they cheekily signed me up at the Amsterdam Bitcoin conference because they were, like, taking... It was a spam trap. Like, I got I got to the desk and I was speaking to them. They were really charming and they got me to enter my email, my thing, and I think they, like, tricked me into becoming a member or something. Like that. I'm joking. They didn't trick me. I knew I was becoming a member. But, no, I didn't vote because I don't like particularly approve of this institution. We've spoken about it before. And in particular, I was struck by um, the user Nolk on uh, Reddit who said this, this is totally broken beyond belief. This voting system is completely busted and it hasn't been thought through. And the other problem that he raised as well is that miners can quite easily rig a system like this. And the reason they're able to rig a system like this is because miners on the network have full discretionary power over what transactions get processed. So up at the top here, you see this was actually the most where they were like organizing. First of all, this is very complicated. It's not simply just vote for the person you want to get elected. Apparently, you're supposed to say yes and or no to the person that you want to get elected. Um, so you've got to go through and say, no, no, I don't want this person. No, I don't want this person. That could be a lot, lot simpler. And so it doesn't look to me like they've really put enough thought into this. A good uh, democracy should be easily understood by everyone. That's why governments go to such lengths to make it as idiot proof as possible when or at least the, the proper ones anyway and then what really kind of shocked me at the end is that the Patrick Merck at the, bit, at the Bitcoin Foundation said this has clearly struck a nerve with folks that think blockchain technology should only be used for transferring Bitcoin and not other 
applications like voting. So not only that, they've also completely missed the point because of course this technology can be used for voting for no, no other reason than that actually David Charm kind of solved this problem in the 80s. In fact, he's still a, a world leading consultant in um, in, in voting mechanisms and I believe he has a consultancy firm and we could have done this just by signing message on the blockchain right so if you sign a message with your private key then you let me just get my camera back up here we go um, you could sign a message right and then you could just put the hash in the blockchain and just email your your vote back now it sounds like all the votes your power to vote was based on your email anyway so it didn't really matter that there was a blockchain because if you wanted to do a civil attack, all you'd have to do is sign up multiple times with email. That's the way I understand it, at least. Of course, you'd have to pay. You know, you'd have to pay more times and so on. But then it really, to me, it just I just wonder why they used a blockchain if it was always going to. The bottleneck apparently was the email system that people got like four four emails and they weren't sure what to do. So yeah, that that's my assessment of it. With the amount of time they had to work on this system, you'd think they would have come up with something that worked better, and if you want to use a voting system, you definitely have to make sure that it's not easily rigged. Moving on. Blockchain.info reports 300 millionth, 300 millionth Bitcoin wallet. Let's see. I swear I'll get the screen sharing thing right. <laughs> it's three million. It's three million. Three millionth Bitcoin wallet. Uh, so wallet software provider blockchain has opened its three millionth Bitcoin wallet. This is really exciting news. Uh, Coinbase boasts about 2.5 million wallets. Now CEO Peter Smith said could not say how many wallets were active, but is optimistic about Bitcoin's growth. However, a skeptical commenter noted that. It's kind of sad that blockchain has 3 million wallets while Khloe Kardashian has 12 million Twitter followers. Bitcoin still has a ways to go. Exit question. Will Bitcoin be able to keep up with the Kardashians? Derek J. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> eventually. I think Bitcoin will outlast the Kardashians. It's a, a turtle... Uh, or tortoise versus the hare sort of race. I mean, yeah, so a couple things strike me about this. That uh, just because there are three million wallets on blockchain doesn't mean there are three million users. Uh, many users have multiple wallets. They're, of course, free to create. It's similar to email addresses. And um, also, while we're talking about Kardashians and Twitter followers, I mean, it's not uncommon for celebrities to buy swaths of followers, so it's not the best comparison, I'd say. Uh, also, following a celebrity requires like one click, and then setting up a blockchain wallet's a little more involved, but not terribly difficult. And I, I want to congratulate blockchain. They were the first wallet that I ever used, and I still recommend them to people as a terrific web wallet. However, I lately have not been recommending their uh, phone wallet, uh, which I think kind of sucks lately, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh, it needs some improvement around the area of... Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just usability. Uh, other wallets have surpassed it. Uh, I've been recommending Airbits a lot. Just want to throw that out there. I still have a lot of love for blockchain. Um, and what was the other one? Oh yeah, Coinbase. Still recommending those to vendors who come into a, a thrift store that I work at, and they, they ask, you know, what what should I get set up with as a merchant? I recommend Coinbase so that uh, they can easily convert to dollars, which blockchain doesn't allow. But you know, there there are trade offs to that. So congratulations, blockchain. Chris? Yeah, so I actually had to look up this this person. I don't actually know. So is this like the same as Kim Kardashian? Is that... I don't really follow it. Sister, I don't a know. Sister, I think it's is it? Sister. It's not going to be a daughter, is it? It's too young, really. I have, I have no idea. <laughs> Though I do, I do congratulate the people at blockchain.info who actually are next door neighbours to me because they're on the same street that uh, I've been working on lately. And I went up to see them and I met Roger and I met, met the whole team. So yeah, it was really good fun. And I also am slightly curious as to how they're measuring these stats because just because you've got that many wallet generations, that, that doesn't equal users. I'd be quite interested to know how many active users. And I'd also be interested to know 
like how we can grow user adoption and po possibly get more people that have bitcoins to actually use them day to day. I don't just mean you know get a wallet. I mean actually spend them because a lot of the businesses. I'm sad to report, not to put a downer on it, but a lot of the businesses in London that do take Bitcoin have kind of said to me, you know, actually, Chris, you know, we were told to like adopt this thing because it was going to be the next best, next best thing and, and then people don't come in and, and don't spend them. So more people need to be spending their bitcoins using the uh, blockchain wallets or, or even using one of these new ones like the Hive wallet and the Bread wallet, they're, they're quite good too. Davi? It's kind of apples and oranges to me. Um, you know, like, why not compare the number of followers to Khloe Kardashian to the total number of Bitcoins which will eventually exist, which is 21 million? Then Bitcoin wins. <laughs> like, if you're going to mix apples and oranges, throw bananas in there, too. I mean, uh, but I am... Uh, I, the, the statistic that's meaningful to me is just to see that blockchain has opened more wallets than, uh, was it Coinbase? Which um, makes me happy because in my mind uh, blockchain is a more freedom oriented um, non-compliant sort of company whereas uh, Coinbase sort of bends over backwards to collect your social security numbers and comply with everything that they can so even though it's not a perfect measure of users the fact that it can't be a measure of users is also one of the things that's valuable about it and so uh, it's good news all around for me I'm going to let you finish, but Bitcoin is the best peer-to-peer -peer currency of the year, and all other currencies need to respect true cryptography. Moving on. Bitcoin crime wave breaks out in New York City. A writer for The Observer observed that two isolated cases of Bitcoin theft means there's a crime wave in the Big Apple. Hide your bits, hide your wallets, because they're robbing everyone in New York City. Or so this writer would have you believe. The thefts involved two different people at two different times exchanging cash for Bitcoin with individuals, and the thief held them up with an illegal gun. While not quite an epidemic, violent thefts are concerning, especially for those dealing in large amounts of cash and Bitcoin, and it's these instances that influence the calls for more regulation. Bitcoin is still kind of a Wild West phase. What can people do to protect themselves from in-person theft? Will this problem get worse if we reach mainstream adoption? Davi Barker. Uh, a crime wave of a crime wave of two. That's amazing. Uh, it, it makes me wonder how many cars were stolen in New York in that period of time, or how many parking tickets were written in that period of time in New York. Uh, it's also interesting that they're calling this a Bitcoin crime when it's a physical crime. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a uh, the person pulled a gun on someone and took their property. Like that is already a crime. That doesn't have to be a Bitcoin crime. Um. But as far as, I mean, my, my first thought when the question was how do you prevent physical theft is uh, physical defense. Uh, you buy a gun. But they're in New York, so my best advice is to leave New York. Um, as far as, like, what this has to do with Bitcoin regulations, I just, I don't think that it could possibly have anything to do with Bitcoin regulations. That would be like saying, like, let's say you're at the ATM, and I come up to you and I put a gun in your back, and I say, hey, put in your PIN number and give me $1,000, and you're going to, like, go to like financial regulators and bank regulators looking for a solution to that like as if like anything the bank could have done a retina scan I still have a gun in your back like a password I still have a gun in your back like this is not this is this is a total non sequitur it has nothing to do with financial regulations it has to do with physical protection and physical defense when and then the question is who's better at it uh, a person defending themselves or the NYPD well, the NYPD has a horrible track record for protecting people, and in fact, they probably beat up more people than they defend from being beaten up. So um, this is this is not even Bitcoin news, really. This is this is a this is a call to get out of New York. Derek. No, I don't see this problem getting worse with m mainstream adoption of Bitcoin because uh, it will mean more users are, are more sophisticated with their security. Uh, one great website seals with clubs Brian who was raided earlier this month gaming commission and they took his electronics I think pr presumably because they thought they were taking his Bitcoin too but they weren't, and so I think this is, provides a perfect counterexample to why Bitcoin is sort of in these 
physical theft scenarios. Like it's Davi pointed out, like this is a physical theft, and uh, just because they took his electronics didn't mean that they also took his Bitcoin, which is kind of unique because uh, in a physical theft up to this point, if you go into someone's house or business and take their property, that's gone. But with Bitcoin, it's not if you're doing it right. So that's pretty unique, and I, so I see Bitcoin as sort of a, a way out of what's happened here. Chris? Yeah, but the problem in this case, Derek, was that this chap was selling Bitcoins and advertising that he was selling Bitcoins. So the thieves knew what the, he was going to have large sums of cash on deposit because they were setting up to do a deal with him. So it was very clever. Um, and as a result, what they've done there is they've made him put the transaction through the blockchain first at gunpoint so that they knew that, that they actually had received them. Um, no, there are actually mechanisms around this in cryptography. None of those would have been applicable here, but there, there is one, for example, that gives you plausible deniability. Uh, there is a piece of software called TrueCrypt which is in a bit of a software limbo at the moment, but if you check it out, you can still download the, the version before it was uh, decommissioned. And what it allows you to do is set up a hard drive with two partitions, one hidden one and one real one. And what you can do is if you're put under duress and someone forces you to, con to reveal the password, you put in a fake password, and it opens up a hidden partition on the drive which looks plausible. And there is no way scientifically of proving that your real partition exists. So you can just turn around to, to the assailant or even the police and and say, no, I did put in my real part. You can even sprinkle some porn in there just to make it look legitimate, like, oh, why would I leave this lying around in a fake partition on a hard drive, really? You know, you can do all kinds of things, but obviously that doesn't work with the blockchain, so we do have to work this out. What I would say is that if you are a seller on local Bitcoins, for example, that you situate yourself somewhere where there is some security. So when I, I used to do face-to-face -face Bitcoin transactions, not that I did very many of that, mind you, but when I did back in the day, I used to actually ironically insist that we do it outside of banks because there's nowhere more secure than a bank, right? And you know, some one one chap I did meet was a little bit dodgy, and I was kind of grateful that I did it. And choose things like shopping malls or anything where there's you know a lot of people around. That would be my advice. Definitely. You want to pick safe places uh, to do these transactions in. So, Moving on. New York proposes special Bitcoin regulation, but won't say why. The bit license proposal has been updated after further analysis and consideration. New York's freedom of information okay, sorry, in consideration. New York's freedom of information law requires that the NYDFS share the analysis it has produced in support of its regulatory proposal, but they're taking their time producing it. Basically, uh, this is from a Cato article where uh, he was trying to find more information about these about what brought them to update these regu regulations and they're refusing to say anything about it. So uh, what has changed in the legislation is it's been updated to include the price for applying for a bit license, which is $5,000 to apply, and is focused more on separating Bitcoin's other uses from its currency function. It still sounds vague to many, and the commenting period on the new draft has been extended for another 30 days. What do you think of the revisions? Will you be voicing your concerns during the extended commenting period? Chris Ellis. See this face? This face is that I don't give a shit face. That's what this, this face is. I don't give a fuck. I haven't been following it. God, me, I can't lie. I can't lie. I don't give two shits. I don't live in New York, and I th and I was following it at first, and I thought it was mildly interesting the way Super Nintendo was like trying to make himself look really slick, like any good PR person, and going on Reddit so he looked edgy, cool, and relevant. Um, but after a while, it just stopped being entertaining. It started being really, really boring. So I'm sorry, but I don't have an opinion on it. Davi, uh, I guess yet another reason to get out of New York. Um, I don't know what the regulations are specifically. I didn't read them or anything, so I can't comment on the specifics. But the reason why should be obvious, and that's that it's New York. Um, there, there's never really needed to be an excuse for a regulator to rewrite old regulations. It, they either worked, and so they want them to work better, or they didn't work, and so they need to write more regulations to fix the problems that they caused. So... <laughs> um, that's the reason why regulate regulators regulate. That's why they're writing regulations. <laughs> um, 
as far as the comment period, I um I'm 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 with you on this one. I don't care. I uh, I don't live in New York. I will never pay five thousand dollars for a Bitcoin license, <laughs> and um, you know, state's gonna state. Um, I'm gonna go about my business as usual. Derek. I've never been concerned about anything coming out of New York because I always carry with me my intergalactic Bitcoin license, which I got from Bitcoin Not Bombs. But, uh, you know, the, the truth is I'm fortunate to live among people who don't care what the government says regarding Bitcoin. We're going to use it anyway. Uh, for example, the thrift store at which I worked today has a Bitcoin vending machine. We never applied for any kind of license or permission. It works regardless of whether or not we have government permission. And the customers who use it are very happy. So. I see a future where people engage in business on a voluntary basis and don't seek permission from strangers in faraway capitals. Great answers. And we still have time for questions and answers from the audience. If you are watching and you'd like to chime in, please do that. Uh, it looks like we have one from Visual Vendetta. Um, I'm one for regulation and compliance of Bitcoin. Look at what happened to MT Gox. They just robbed everyone and got away with it. What do you guys think of that? Um, if I'm not mistaken, MT Gox was not in New York, so I'm uh, not sure what New York regulations could have done to prevent it. Uh, but, I mean, to some extent, it's uh, it, it was a free market, and it was a Wild West, and anybody who was paying attention was saying, get out of Malcox for months before anything happened. And so it's uh, I chalked this one up to buyer beware. Um, I guess the question becomes, uh, who regulates the regulators? Because there's nothing that went on in Mount, T in, in Mount Gox that could not happen at any one of these regula <laughs> regulatory agencies. So I, I just don't see that as a solution to the problem. And also, Matt MT Gox wasn't actually bailed out. So even, like, I don't think uh, Magical Tux is going to get very far, to be fair. Like, he's, he's one of the most wanted people. All the trolls on the forums are after him every time he tweets. He still tweets out, believe it or not. He has the nerve to tweet out, and people are able to triangulate where he is based on the angle of the photos that he takes from his, like, condo in, in Tokyo. So I, I think he's going to have a very unpleasant life. Yeah, I think so too. I think he this whole thing has really uh, tainted any future business deals that he may try to do. And uh, while it does appear that he got away with it, um, at least for now, uh, yeah, there's really not much that could have been done. I think there were a lot of warning signs with MT Gox that um, you know a lot of others saw and were telling people to get out. And then there was a wave of new people who missed a lot of that information. And uh, it's rather unfortunate, but I'm not sure the regulations can uh, fix what happened at Mount Gox. Um, so we have another one from Infinite Radio who says... Kim.com tweeted about buying Bitcoin last night. I know, big deal. But his mega software and Bitcoin seems like a match made in heaven. Anyone have any thoughts on a mega Bitcoin slash crypto slash Bitcoin slash crypto marriage? It's happening, guys. It's happening. It's all going to happen. This is good news. I was really happy when I heard that, especially as I have an announcement coming up. Oops, I let that slip. And I think it's brilliant. I think me and him are going to be like a match made in heaven. It's going to all work out. No, I, th I believe that the price took a little uptick as well, right? After he made that announcement. Was that what coincided with the uptick today? It's possible. I missed that one, so... It wouldn't surprise me because he's a, he's a very popular figure, right? And he's, an, he's, what, he's what they call in marketing an influencer or a thinkfluencer, if you want to... Uh, parody and um, and that means that when he speaks people listen and people make decisions based on things that he says so I think it is a big deal actually and I think it's about time that he he really got into this I think we should do a comparison between the uh, users of Kim.com's software and services and the number of followers of Kardashians on Twitter and <laughs> see which one has influenced more people because it would not surprise me in the least the internet being what it is if an internet mogul like Kim.com actually I mean Kim Kardashian claimed to break the internet right that's a 
misnomer, <laughs> right? But uh, Kim.com, they're both Kims. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think he's a huge figure, and I think he's influential, and I think he speaks to um, a, a niche or a category of online internet communities that Bitcoin is ripe for, and so I think it's great news. If you have to contrive a hashtag to try to break the internet, you're probably not going to break it. And a single dress broke the internet last night uh, without any kind of help. So, <laughs> we'll Hey, see. about Kim.com, wasn't there recently some problem with him uh, being able to accept PayPal? Yeah, well, he's okay. a, he's a pirate, right? He's always going to have trouble with, with legacy banking systems and financial systems on the internet. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, we've seen this with Wikipedia, or it wasn't Wikipedia, WikiLeaks, um, not being able to accept certain donations because governments don't approve of what they do. Um, Kim.com was famously raided, uh, even in New Zealand, but I think that was by the American authorities, so it just makes no sense uh, why he would stick with the legacy system of money uh, when he could just as easily s switch over for basically no cost to the money of the internet, which is Bitcoin. Yeah, it seems to make sense in Infinite Radio ads politically and technologically a big deal. Internet party redux with Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's great. Um, and now it's time for everyone's favorite segment, uh, predictions or story of the week. What does your magic eight ball say? Or did you come across a story that moved you this week? Davi. Oh man, coming to me first. I'm totally unprepared. Uh, uh, how how long of a prediction is this supposed to be for just the next week? Um, how, however long it can be. However a long. For anything. I think Liberty Forum is going to be a smash. I'm planning on going, and um, it was looking like I wasn't going to be able to, but um, I pulled some strings and got it together, and so I'll be at Liberty Forum. I won't be speaking about Bitcoin. I'll be speaking about zombies, but. Um, I guess I would predict that Bitcoin would survive a zombie apocalypse. I haven't figured out how, but I've got my best brain cells on the job, and I'm going to figure out how Bitcoin can work in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, radio transmissions, absolutely. Um, so, more on that later. <laughs> All right, Derek J. The story of the week is that, uh, and I hinted at this earlier, uh, Brian Mikon of Seals with Clubs and Dunk Down Radio Podcast was raided in Las Vegas. Uh, he ran a very successful longtime poker website, used Bitcoin, and uh, he's going to continue doing that. I thought that was so. There's a few interesting parts of this story that I hinted at earlier. So the the government raided his apartment and uh, held him at gunpoint while he was in his underwear, put him in handcuffs, um, even though he had a toddler at home. And they took his electronics, presumably because they wanted to stop him from having this successful website and, and take his, his earnings. But they didn't. <laughs> and he, he went on YouTube. First he left. He went to a place called Antigua and then made a couple of YouTube videos being like, yeah, uh, this happened, uh, Seals with Clubs is shutting down, but swcpoker.eu is going to start, and that's totally new and different from Seals with Clubs. Uh, and so it's just going to continue with a, you know, a, a different admin team. Not everyone who worked with Seals with Clubs was, was happy about this raid and, and felt comfortable continuing, but he's got the bravery and courage to just keep going. Um, that's awesome, and I think it's a real success story for Bitcoin because he had the wherewithal to protect his client's money. Uh, I mean, up, if you go to Seals with Clubs now, it says, we're solvent, everything is fine, just take out your money right now, you've still got time, just take out your money, the Bitcoins are there, and, uh, you know, swcpoker.eu is already up and running, so if you just want to go switch over there, you can do that. And uh, I'm not a gambler myself, but I just see this as an amazing story and uh, something that really only Bitcoin made possible. In the past, if a person was running a poker uh, game or 
a house, people with guns coming in and taking your property is going to end that. It's over, but uh, not in the digital age. So this is very exciting. Yeah, that's amazing. It's really courageous to keep going. Uh, you know, after a raid, um, the the you know tragedy of something like that can be just terrible on someone. But good on him for continuing to do this. And I think I agree with you. It wouldn't be possible uh, without Bitcoin. He actually no. tweeted, "Math does not bow to guns." Nice. That's awesome. Chris, what do you got for us? Well, that is very, very cool. I'm glad to hear about that. So, yes, so today, everyone, I've got a bit of an announcement. As you all know, if you've been following me, and you know who you are if you have, um, that I have been working on something in the background. And actually, to be honest, it wasn't all that much of a secret because I tried to give this idea away last year, back in May, and then I tried again back in November, and then I tried again, like, in January. And at Christmas time, just before I tried to give it away for the last time, uh, a good friend of mine called Leo Campbell uh, quit his job. He's the developer. He quit his job for me and said, look, I'm going to work on this because I believe in you. I believe in your ideas. And this particular idea really caught everyone's imagination when we put it on Reddit for the first time. And then when we voiced it again in November, a few people shout out and said, you have to make this. So we've been working on this really, really, diff uh, really, really hard. I'm just going to try and pull it up right now and sec see if the share screen starts working. Okay. And I just want to show this to you, okay? So it's a, it's a Bitcoin wallet. It runs in the browser. And what it does is it automatically finds Bitcoin addresses on the page for you, and it selects them like this. And what it will do is it will automatically tip people at the end of the week based on who you enjoyed the most. And what you can do is, like, let's say you don't like this guy here, like Chris said. It's like, who is that guy, right? You can just pull him out. And if you really, really like someone, you know, I don't know, like the Global Citizenship Project, you can just subscribe to that one, okay? And then it will just keep paying that person. You can see I've subscribed to a few people here uh, since, we're, since we've been testing it out. So it's a Bitcoin wallet that automatically pays people based on your viewing habits. It's not just based on your viewing habits. There's also a little bit of interaction in there as well. And I want to give a big shout out to all the alpha testers and all the people that have been really, really helpful in giving us their feedback. Some people have been sending like, like war and peace. Like they're sending these big long emails, like telling us how they feel about it and how much they love it. Sorry, guys, were you able to see that? I don't think you were able to see that. One sec. Let me just see entire screen. One sec. I don't know that you just saw that. There we go. One sec. Let me just show that. Okay. So I refresh the page. It's going to be really slow. There it comes up. And then the little icon links up orange. And you can like subscribe to people. You can block people. You can ban. I'm never going to pay this person. I'm going to pay this person. And then you can see them all in like the subscriptions. And so I'm really, yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm going to get, I'm um, just going to show you something else as well, because we've also been shouting out to a lot of people. We're also in the middle of making a video for the crowdfunder. I mean, God, running a crowdfunding campaign is like a full-time job. But we have, I can announce that we have got the support of Nixie Pixel, who's a really big open source advocate. We, our intention right now is to release the code um, in, in GPL3, which is open source, so long as you keep the code open source. So we want to make this a community-run effort. And Nixie has approved um, our use of her likeness in our video that we will be releasing very soon. And I'll just show you a little kind of glimpse of it here as I kind of talk over it. So what I'm going to need from you guys is I'm going to need uh, all your support in the coming weeks. I am planning on not just releasing the video and then just waiting for the money to come in. Hey, there's me looking at my polo neck. Toe neck, hello. And um, I do need your support because we need to spread this. We need to spread the word out there. It's a little cameo by Lara, and some great graphics here by Louis. Um, Louis Chang of Proof of Work in London. Big shout out to those guys. They're a very very talented bunch. So. Yeah, we do want your support. We want, pe we want people to hear about it. And probably we haven't quite decided which um, crowdfunding platform we're going to work for. All the literature has been written, we're spending all week on this. And we wa I want to know your feedback as to whether or not I should go on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. I've been told a little bit of both. I'm not going to... I don't want to tamper with any of the votes. I did do a shout out earlier asking for people's opinion. It's still kind of 50-50. We probably will do something with Max Kaiser as well on Start Join. Probably just have some exclusive perks just for the Bitcoiners. I can't confirm that right now. 
Um, but actually, the reason I wanted to go with Indiegogo and Kickstarter is because I wanted to reach out to people that weren't typically within the Bitcoin space. I wanted to reach out to artists. I wanted to reach out to entrepreneurs and journalists and people that just are struggling to, to pay because this has been auteured, right? It's been made by someone who faced the same problem and that's me and I'm going to be here every day of the campaign um, I'm going to be answering questions on Twitter I will do, be doing live streams to give updates on how it's all going and if you know anyone out there who is struggling to, to, you know, to, to pay for their art I want to hear from you I want to hear about the challenges you face because we can learn from it and then we can start to build features in um, and we can start to, to help you guys out and in particular I'm interested also if you've got a, a blog or, or a vlog or, or YouTube channel and you put big, your Bitcoin addresses on there I want to hear from you as well because we want to start promoting you guys over the coming weeks so thank you for your time Thanks so much, Chris. Definitely uh, keep an eye out uh, for Chris's project. This is really exciting. And uh, yeah, you said the crowdfunding sale will be starting next week. Is that right? Yeah, with, with luck. We've written it all. We've done it all. We're still waiting on some permissions for, for the video because we're using some library footage and stuff. But yeah, hopefully next, next week, some point, we will be announcing it and, and we'll be launching it. All right, excellent. Definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, I do want to add one thing on kind of a somber note here. I wanted to give my condolences to the family and friends of Leonard Nimoy, who passed away today at age 83. Um, some of you, are, you probably know him as uh, playing Spock on Star Trek, and I wanted to read a couple Spock quotes um, here. Computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. And also... Without followers, evil cannot spread. And now I want to read one by uh, Mr. Nimoy himself. Logic is the beginning of wisdom, not the end. Rest in peace, Mr. Nimoy. You will be missed. If you like what you, what you see, check out the Bitcoin group on Facebook, Twitter, G+, and YouTube, and subscribe to the World Crypto Network for the latest analysis of all things crypto. Until next time, live long and prosper.